I am Silas Edekunle, the CEO of REACH Robotics. We are currently based in the Bristol Robotics Lab um, in the incubator space and we're a startup that's been around for about 1.5 years. Currently we have uh, five staff members in the company. Redefining consumer robotics. So we are developing the world's first intelligent gaming robot. So they look like this actually. You control them via an app on a smartphone and they can battle each other. So that's their primary purpose is to entertain. The robot itself is a modular robot. So that means uh, there's a recurring revenue business model for us as a company. And as users play with the robot themselves, they get better over time. So the robot has a purpose and it improves. So the robot you buy today is different from what you get tomorrow. And then we also have a one player training mode as well. So what we're doing essentially is combining robot robotics, gaming and augmented reality to create a new category of entertainment robotics products. Yeah, in, t in terms of uh, redefining con consumer robotics itself, so what we're looking at is when people think of, of robots or when people want to have a robot themselves, particularly in the entertainment sense, we look at the user and what they want themselves and sometimes it's really fulfilling this fantasy or bringing their wildest imaginations to life and it's our job to merge technology and sometimes you know um, seemingly impossible desires of the of the consumer and try and make that a reality and we're focusing on that by hiring talent really you know extremely smart they're extremely smart people on the team PhDs in robotics PhDs in computer vision so bringing really smart people and talent and giving them an opportunity to come together and create a product that will amaze people and that's what we've been focusing on and um, the journey so far that's definitely been what's been guiding our journey so far we've currently just come back from an accelerator in America where we've got an opportunity to be exposed to a wider network, you know, higher caliber network in terms of that particular segment of the of the market when it comes to entertainment and consumer robotics. So always making sure that we are not only pushing the barrier of the of the technology that we are creating, but also um, pushing ourselves as a company to the limits of what is seemingly possible for a robotics hardware startup. Um, in terms of capacity for us as a, as a company to conduct R&D internally, um, I think we've located ourselves quite well for a robotic startup to be based in the Bristol Robotics Lab and be part of this ecosystem where things like RIF exist, where there is support for you even though you're a small company, there is support for you and to be able to tap into the access, to, into the talent that's available. In Bristol in general, so for example there are two universities here you know, this is one of the, the best robotics lab in Europe itself. So having access to the prototyping environment and facilities here as well really helps us. So it's leveraging the, the network and the ecosystem that we find ourselves in. Yeah, so we, we came in contact through to RIF through the business advisor here in the robotics lab. So we were a startup, a very young startup, and needed some support. And you know, as my role, I was looking for support for the company. And I uh, talked to Jill, who mentioned that there was this fantastic uh, program that was being put together and put me in contact with uh, Farid, the RIF manager for, for Bristol. And uh, the first step was to sit down with him and he found out what stage we were at and what support we needed and so the program at this early stage was quite tailored to exactly what we needed which at that time was some marketing research and some prototyping um, support and that was what was given to us which allowed us to then demonstrate where the company was going some initial prototype and some market validation to then pitch that to investors and take the company to the next stage so at every point where we've interacted with a uh, riff you know, an analysis was done to look at exactly what kind of support we needed and that was then acted um, upon. Um, because of the nature of our, of our company, we already had um, in-house robotics and mechatronics and engineering skills. 
where the ref was really really helpful was augmenting you know the capabilities of our company so for example we did some work with a, another company called Folium Optics and from the name their specialty was uh, displays and, and optical um, de devices and that was something we needed as a prototype at that time which we had no idea about and uh, Riff helped us to facil facilitate uh, the setting setting that up helping us to manage the, the interaction with the company and really just the uh, supporting us as we worked with, with this company. Another situation was uh, uh, with, uh, with Chris, who was the, the first employee with the company actually. So we got an opportunity to work with him during the RIF program and then after that finished we kept him on board because he was uh, quite uh, pivotal to the, 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 the growth of the company itself. Um, due to financial limitations at the at the start of the company, we couldn't uh, have access to, for example, the right talent or the right prototype and equipment. And that was what uh, Riff helped us to to set up, being able to bring Chris on board, who did the the software development on the robot, being able to 3D print some prototypes to then show to to potential investors. Those were the key things or the key helps that we needed at that stage, and that was exactly what we got. In terms of the, the future trajectory of the, of the company, we, we've learned a lot of lessons over the last uh, 1.5 years and that's, you know, starting a company like this is quite difficult, especially when you're selling to consumers as well. The whole journey of starting with a prototype and taking the product to market is quite difficult and uh, the most amount of the, where we need the most uh, support would again be where Riff has really been helping us a lot previously which would be access to talent at the right stage you know, getting closer to manufacturing and also prototyping that's really important you know it's a, it's a business where you have to iterate fast and learn fast because time is not your friend so those kind of support is what I'd identify that we need the most right from the start and even moving forward till we get to market Yeah, in terms of the next uh, stages for, for the company, uh, as I mentioned, our vision is to really redefine the consumer robotics experience. I think we are creating the future of entertainment as we know it. And what we have is our first product called Mechamon. It will be a fantastic product to play with and also to learn about robotics with in the, in the future. In the short term, we will be shipping the, the product quite soon and we'll have on our website. People can currently sign up and put their email down to find out more information about the product and our journey as a, as a company. Well, as a as a new startup, you, you could essentially say we're we're venturing out into the into the open wild world, and as you do that, you discover a lot of new things. What makes your company valuable? So that's important to us because in the long run, it's what it's the value proposition we are giving to the customer, and um, some measures we've put in place as filing our trademarks, some initial provisional patent uh, filing as we discover them. In in the long run, I think it's going to be even more more important, and we'll create value in the company and create value in what we can deliver to our customers as well. So definitely important and we'll definitely be protecting ourselves as we go out there. Um, my opinion, a personal opinion, separate to reach robotics regarding um, robotics replacing labor is that um, in some cases Yes, that, that will be the case, and but these will be repetitive tasks, not in the short term, not in the creative tasks. Any task that you know involves people's skills or a creative element to it will be quite difficult for a robot to, to replace. I think the, the most benefit or the most efficient ways will be interacting with robots is in co-working environments, removing the you know dangers of some working environment, allowing us to work in places we'd normally not be able to through remote operation, for example. So these kind of stuff, um, you know, for example, a robot is a lot more efficient doing repetitive tasks over time 
whereas human efficiency drops so fast after, after you get past a few past a few hours. So these things where a robot can go on and obviously not suffer from the you know uh, lack of attention or human weakness as, as as we do. In those cases, the robot will make make sense. But whenever there's human nature or element of being human involved, you you'll always have people there. So we're not going to replace be replaced anytime soon. We're going to be supported and made more efficient by robots. Advantages of uh, working with Riff, it's quite a fast process. Um, the, su the support is tailored to your requirements, um, proximity to, to, to Riff itself, um, access to, to talent, so th this is more specific to, to the company. So access to talent, access to, to suppliers. The Riff has quite, quite a good network um, itself, so whatever help you need, there will be some contact through the rift to, to get it. So I think that's actually more than five, yeah. I, th I think in terms of weaknesses, the, the rift doesn't have too many. It's a, it's a very well put together program, and very, very useful program. I would say for a very early stage of startup, flexibility and access to finance is really important. And in some cases, Riff couldn't doesn't have a direct funding mechanism. You would have to go through the 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 program manager and really identify the need and how that could fit into the Riff structure, as opposed to what the the company needed and how Riff could directly just support that. Yes, yeah, so without a doubt, I'd I'd recommend Riff, definitely. I'd say it depends. It depends on your on your needs. So for us, because we needed a lot of prototyping, we, we had to be to be close. Um, it's it's a digital age now where you can communicate over long distances. But when it comes to hardware, where you actually have to be there, then I'd say you have to be close. There will be a cost benefit analysis that you can do on it. So as the distance increases, probably the there'll be a point where sort of the efficiency of the pro of the program or the usefulness of it drops off but really when you're at a very young stage for the for the company any support you get is usually good enough support yeah